Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? Uh, I'm all right, man. My uh, my back's still killing me. For those of you listening to these on a regular basis, you probably know that Nathan and I record two or three of these at a time. I'm still in that space. My back's killing me. Man, I hope you get better. I will. I ain't dead yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we're going to try and rush through this episode because you've got a haircut appointment as soon as we're done with this. Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. I got my inadequacies out of the way. Um, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, you wanted to talk about relationship marketing and the client journey as it applies to the difference between selling a product or a service. You guys that listen to this podcast on a regular basis should absolutely be kissing Nathan's ass because he is bringing some awesome conversations, getting me to talk about all kinds of stuff that I normally don't talk about unless you're like in my inner, inner, inner world. But he says that this is awesome sauce, so let's do that. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because almost all of the marketing advice out there, almost all of the relationship journey advice, the you got to do the opt-in and then you got to have the email sequence and then you have to have the content. Everything that everybody is talking about is on a product level. This is how you do it if you want to eventually sell somebody on your product. And it seems like there's similar paths or there's similar steps along the path when it comes to clients, but there are differences. And I've, as I've been involved in your world longer and I write copy and I usually write copy for um, software as a service or info products. So I understand marketing from a, I'm trying to lead somebody to buy a product but being in your world, I'm starting to understand that there's a parallel but different path for getting people to be a, a client. So I kind of wanted to get your insights on the similarities and the differences between the relationship customer journey and the relationship marketing for uh, selling a product and selling a service. The difference is manufactured relatability versus natural relatability, right? When you're selling a product and you're doing it as a copywriter specifically, I think everybody will be able to understand this. You're essentially having a one-sided conversation where as a good copywriter, you will go really research the marketplace to where you really understand their issues, their problems, their pain, what it is that they're trying to solve. And then you go through a process to get their attention, hold their attention, and then direct their attention, right? And if you're, if you're good as a copywriter, you're able to take somebody who's dealing with that issue, that situation, that symptom, that pain that's right now present and urgent, and you're able to walk them through an emotional, then a logical buying decision. Selling a product is almost always a one-sided conversation. That's why it's called copywriting, right? When you're doing this for getting clients, it's, it's really hard to do that manufactured relatability thing unless you're really a highly trained salesperson because what people sense and what they feel, that bullshit meter thing is... I actually feel heard and I actually feel understood. And the only way that you can hear me and really understand me is if you get me. And if you get me, it's probably because you kind of like me. You see yourself in me, right? You've been through the shit that I'm struggling with and you know how to fix it and you want to help. If you come from that place people naturally gravitate towards you and the right people naturally raise their hand and say, I want the thing. You're the guy. Where do I put my money? And that comes down to knowing who it is that you want to serve. We call that your ideal client avatar. Well, you got to get your message in front of them, right? So we do that through profile funnels and then you've got to know how to start a conversation with them. We do that with ammo, actively making meaningful offers to a very specific, highly targeted uh, segment in your marketplace. And when you do that, you don't have to do the, the predetermined client journey and all of that stuff because it's natural. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. So why is it that if I'm going to be doing business with somebody one-on-one versus if I'm going to buy a prepackaged solution that they have, even if the outcome that I'm looking for is the same, say, let's just take what you do. Uh, Say I'm going to buy the course that you sell, uh, one of the mini courses that you've put together, um, we'll say Leads Lab. Say I'm going to buy Leads Lab versus I'm going to buy Attraction Lab where I'm actually going to get on a call every week with you and we're going to do like a a little miniature mastermind um, slash training. They're both getting me to the same solution. I want to be able to get more clients through social media, either LinkedIn or Facebook. One of them is a prepackaged delivered solution. One of them is a one-on-one. It feels like even though it's buying the same thing from the same person, at least the same result, it seems like the two of those require a totally different way of convincing me to buy into one versus the other. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the differentiator there is where you are at has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with where you're at, what level you're at. Okay. And there's, there's an even more in depth behind the scenes um, reason for that. But to put it, to put it simply, either you've got more money than time or more time than money. If you've got more money than time, I'd rather work with you so I can get all the way down to the nitty gritty shit that you actually need to do so we can put those pieces in place and you can be off to the races sooner rather than later. If you've got more time than money, then you probably have some bigger, broader strokes that need to be like figured out in the whole client acquisition game. You should go through Leads Lab. Right. If you know who it is that you serve and you've got a pretty good idea of what you do and you just need to learn how to like get their attention and then hold their attention and then direct their attention, we need to do that one on one because I can quickly get to the bottom of where you're missing because it comes back to these four questions. What's working? What's not working? What's missing? And what's next? Right. The differentiator there is is, um, the people that are going to buy a product by and large have more time than money. And the people that are going to buy one-on-one, let's just fucking fix it, have more money than time, right? That's the differentiator. But I think if I'm going to buy the, if I'm the more money than time guy and I'm going to buy an hour long meeting or an hour and a half long meeting with you every week, I'm going to need more than a sales page. I'm going to need to actually have some actual conversations with you before I commit to that versus committing to buying a three or $400 uh, course. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fact relationship marketing, right? And there's not one specific path for that. You come into my world and you need to hear me say this. And you're like, oh, that's for me. Bob comes into my world and he, ne- he needs to hear me say this and that and that other thing. And then he's like, oh, that's for me. Here's my money. Relationship marketing. It's, it's different. It's not just a funnel. Okay. So let's, now I'm going to confine you a little bit. Um, I'm going to take the traditional sales funnel in regular marketing and I'm going to go through some of the different steps and I'm going to ask you what that translates into when it comes to a relationship funnel. So um, the steps that we usually have in a traditional marketing funnel, number one, we've got content. Number two, we've got an opt-in. Number three, we've got a follow-up sequence. And number four, we've got a sales page. So what would those four translate into when it comes to a relationship funnel? Mm -hmm. It would translate into a profile funnel, right? It's a content hub where it's the 30,000 foot overview of what you do, who you are, who you do it for, and your take on how it's done, right? It's a profile funnel. It's no longer a sales funnel. That would be on like Facebook or LinkedIn or something. Correct. Okay. And then the second piece of that is um, the opt-in, okay? People that have more money than time aren't going to take the time to opt in because they know that a sequence, a follow-up sequence is coming, which means that I can't get the thing that I'm actually after for, after for several days, if not a week or two. I'm not interested in that. So the opt-in is actually a call to action to 
get more info, which then comes through your next piece or your, uh, I forget which piece in this funnel it was, the content funnel. Okay, so I've got a problem, which means that I am experiencing a symptom of that problem right now. And if you put content out around that specific symptom, that urgent issue that underlies the big main problem that you eventually solve, now you've got my attention. Okay, so with a little bit of content around the specific issue that people are dealing with, bringing them back to your profile funnel and through your profile funnel, you've got the option for them to either get more information or to hop on a call, right? Or in better yet into messenger that essentially replaces the opt-in. Now, instead of a follow-up sequence, it's just a conversation. I can deliver that whole follow-up sequence in a 15 minute back and forth messenger conversation right? To where I, that's how I sell all my stuff. 98% of all of the high ticket stuff we sell happens through messenger between six and 12 grand. And on occasion, our 36 K offer, right? Usually the six to 12 K first date into our world is sold through messenger. I don't ever even get on a zoom call with almost any of them. And then once they're in that world, now we actually have face-to-face -face conversations over zoom calls where they are getting the thing that they bought from me. And then we're able to decide if it makes sense for them to have that next thing. Mm -hmm. So this is a relationship funnel. You've got to get people's attention. You do that with content. You've got to hold their attention, which is your profile funnel, right? There's specific content that goes on your profile funnel, where, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn. And then you've got to direct that attention. And you do that in a messenger conversation, messenger funnel. Okay. So it seems like I, I kind of started out. It seems like there is a lot of parallel. There's this, this step needs to come and then this is what logically follows next. And this is what's going to make them comfortable to follow next. Um, it's just a lot more personalized and it feels like it's not a, I mean, a lot of marketing now is, is kind of simulated individuality to it but it feels like this is actual authentic individual connections versus um i'm going to segment you and i'm going to have the best pre-programmed sequence to hit you based off of how you segmented out this is actually um if i'm going to go for a client versus a product i'm going to actually give them the one-on-one -on -one time that they deserve mm -hmm. yep it starts both of those start as one to many right but the selling a product stays one to many, right? It's you and your product marketed, right? Even in, e even in an email sequence, it, it might feel to the person receiving it that it's one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not. And anybody who's been through more than two of those knows that this went out to everybody. But that's where it stops. Relationship marketing goes from one to many to one to one. And that's the right now, real time, live back and forth conversation. And we do that with Messenger, right? Regardless of which platform you're on. And to replace strategy calls, we keep it in Messenger. But so you're not spending all day in Messenger talking to a bunch of people that aren't the right people. We use our one to many forward facing content to help them self-select either in or out of our world. And that's my, that's my sauce. That's my trick. That's the thing that I do. Nice. Okay. Um, you've given me a lot to think about and you've actually really cleared up a lot of kind of fogginess that I had about this. So um, now I feel like I can take the stuff that I excel at and start implementing it better in the personal uh, uh, personality what what is it called relationship marketing relationship marketing there you go um my profile funnel <laughs> mm -hmm. uh all right landon i really appreciate it and before we're out of here i got one more question for you most of the stuff that you teach and that you really excel in was developed before social media came about mm -hmm. you're pretty much the only person that i've seen that is taking the stuff that's that's traditional and, and makes sense and is timeless and has really 
dived in and focused on how do, how do you take these old proven selling systems and make them work in social media? What was it that, uh, what was it that led you to kind of pioneer in this direction? I was dragged kicking and screaming into this. I had no interest in showing anybody how to do this. Seriously. Like I, for, if you're listening, Nathan's actually laughing his ass off. Um, and then once I kind of started doing this, it, it became really clear that if I can help people treat other people well and make more money, then why wouldn't I? It's a skill set that I've got, right? Mm-hmm. And because I think it's funny to throw rocks at the way most other people do sales on the internet. Fair enough. All right, Landon, I really appreciate your time and I appreciate you kind of doing some deep dive, hard teaching in the last couple of episodes. If people want to check out more of the podcast, where can they go? Salesgorillapodcast.com. Bitches. All right, man. I will catch you next week. Peace out, Cub Scouts.